going to do another playthrough of Dawn of Peacemakers, but I had a really hard choice to make because this game has a ton of unlockable secret components and ideas and mechanics that you only get access to as you progress through the campaign. And I didn't want to ruin some of the best moments and surprises of the game by showing too much in another playthrough, but at the same time I wanted to show you that the game gets really complex and challenging and interesting and the strategies change. So what I decided to do is show you the second mission in the campaign, which only adds one new unit and one new terrain type, so nothing too earth-shattering there. And I also pulled some optional variants you can play with that show up later on in the campaign. These will make the mission a lot tougher. I really have no idea if I'm going to win, but it should show how varied the game can get and how much replay there is within the exact same missions in the campaign. So with all that out of the way, I hope you enjoyed Dawn of Peacemakers, and I promise uh, the end of that Arkham Horror LCG campaign is coming really soon. So here we go with Scenario 2, Soaring Incursion. You can see the sort of artistic rendering of the map here. We've got our friends the Macaws. Remember, they were the aggressors of this new war that we're trying to prevent. And we've got the Ocelots over here across a river with some defensive towers to help them uh, kind of survive the onslaught. Let's see what the story says. It is as I feared. The Kuchia have gained the information they were after and are readying for an invasion as I write this. Their most probable target is the Mariokin Crossing. When I first visited the place about 50 years ago, it was only a lousy pile of wood you could barely call a bridge. Since then, it has gradually evolved and is now one of the most important passages across the river. Without it, the Macaws won't be able to form a functioning supply line to support their invasion. The Ocelots do realize its importance both to the Macaws and to themselves, and despite their fewer numbers, will defend it fiercely. The bulk of the invading force will arrive at the crossing within a few days, with the intention of gaining a steady foothold on the other side of the border. A swift and decisive strike is to be expected something that will throw the defenders into disarray if they succeed. I believe there is no way to avoid further conflict. We are on the brink of war. Now to show you the heart of the setup here, we've got our leader. And this, by the way, is the same leader that was uh, leading the invasion before. And one of the cool kind of legacy-ish, without any destruction elements that the game has is that if these leaders get defeated, they don't show up for the rest of the campaign. So if this guy had been defeated, he wouldn't be on the board at all, and the Macaws would start with lower morale. Besides the leader, we've got a nice little front line of three Macaw soldiers, the basic guys we saw in the last scenario. We've also got a new unit, the Macaw Rangers. You notice they do a ton of damage, five. That's enough to defeat a regular unit in one hit. But they have the same range, the say zero armor, and actually less life than uh, the average soldiers. They're additionally mobile. That special keyword means that they'll move again when they move once. So basically, they'll get to the front lines very quickly. The Ocelots have a leader this time, but he has the exact same ability as the McCall leader in that if he takes uh, half of his life or more, then uh, they lose one morale. And we've got some Ocelot warriors and a couple Ocelot archers. So the archers are set up on defensive towers. They're going to get minus one to any damage they suffer, and they're uh, giving their side plus one morale. And then we've got the warrior and the leader over here, right next to a forest, which could make him uh, untargetable unless people are right next to him. And some of the McCall units are on a new terrain type for this scenario, and that's Highlands. And this just increases their range by one. So, for example, both these guys have two range, now they could shoot up to three away. Still not going to let them actually target anybody at this point, but could make a difference eventually. I'm playing my good friend Akazan, the Fennec Fox this time, isn't he adorable with his big ears? And he's sitting on a bridge between the two forces. Now I said I was going to have some minor spoilers for things that come later in the campaign, and here's one of them. So later on, I won't say when, you get the ability to add basically extra conditions to winning uh, for a cooperative play. And in this case, I'm using the one for this scenario, which makes it a lot tougher. So it says manning the towers is crucial. The ocelots would be foolish to leave the area without guarding. Then there's the matter of pushing the macaws back. So it says, in order for you to win the game, the following condition must be met in addition to fulfilling a common victory condition. At the end of the game, the red army must control both towers, and the blue army can have at most two units on the game board. Now let's go look at what this looks like, because man, is it a challenge. So if you watch the first playthrough, you might remember how you actually win the game. And by the way, if you didn't watch it, I suggest you go and do so now, because I'm not going to be going over the rules in nearly as much detail as I did there. 
But each side is their motivation tracker. The Ocelots start at 6, the Macaws start at 7. Every time they lose a unit, it goes down 1. If their leader is half hurt or more, it goes down 1. And uh, there are some cards in the deck, these revoke cards, that push it down 1. And I win if both sides are in the green at the same time. Both are kind of willing to withdraw from the fight without too much bloodshed. But what our friendly little agenda card did is requires me to both keep both towers manned by red people, which means, first of all, I can't let these Ocelot archers die because then they won't be able to hold the towers for me. And also means I can't, like I did in the end of the last video, I can't be tricky and move them off the tower to make the Ocelots surrender. I need to leave them those uh, two motivation points from the towers, which is going to make it tougher for me to make the Ocelots give up. But the more challenging part is that I need to have no more than two units for the entire Macaw uh, army on the board. Look at how many guys they have. They have seven guys, which means I have to get five of their guys wiped out. I have to basically help the Ocelots do a ridiculous job defeating these guys. And the Macaws only have seven motivation, which means if they lose five guys, they're already down to two. So I have to be really careful to make sure the Macaws don't get their revoked cards that are going to lower their motivation even more. So I'm anticipating staying with the Macaws most of the time and just hoping that the Ocelots can bring the pain and really just take them out one by one. But then I have to get the Ocelots weakened too. It's going to be a real challenge. But again, I wanted to show you how even the second scenario, which might be kind of a tutorial if you play it by the basic rules, can become really challenging when you play with these additional options that get added as you go through the campaign. I'll note one final thing, there is an alternate victory condition where if the commander of the Macaw army crosses the river, so reaches any of these hexes, then uh, the Macaws immediately win and the Reds immediately lose. So not only do I have to defeat at least five of the seven blue guys and keep these guys holding the towers and make neither of them go down to zero on their morale too quickly, but I also have to keep uh, the commander from moving too fast. So yeah, good luck, Mike. I don't know how this is going to go. One final kind of fun thing is that at the end of every scenario, you get a like little reward or penalty card based on how you did. And these get more and more uh, complicated and varied as you go along, but here's mine for scenario one, since I, I'll say I won it, which I did in the last video. Outside resources. Wine, cheese, fruit, sweets, spices, all from faraway lands with exotic names, all far above their pay grade, sent by an anom anonymous benefactor. Anonymous. After setup, draw two cards from the resource deck. Show them to all players and collective decide which one or two players places them into their hands. Well, I'm the only player, so I'm going to get them both, but this is great, because usually you only start with two cards, so now I'm doubling my starting hand to uh, four resource cards, and then don't forget I'm going to get four resources every turn to go to my single adventurer. So, let's see what we've got. Got Emergency Care, choose one of your damage companion units, remove two damage tokens from it. Uh, no way to influence what the armies are doing, but nice movement and fortification ability. Lost Missive, choose one of your companion units, discard a top card from the army's order deck. That's a great one if I see something bad like a Revoked that I want to just get out of there entirely and not have affect them, which I need that for the Macaws, so I'm probably going to hang on to that one. Uh, false Order, choose one of your companion units, look at the bottom card from its Army's Order deck, and then I can choose to place that uh, back on the bottom or to the top. And then finally, Carrier Pigeon, uh, remember if I'm playing solo, this lets me draw a card, a replacement for this, so I'll probably do that in just a second. Lots of movement, a little bit of influence, and nice amount of fortification, so fairly good options here to start. So my priority to begin with is to get right in with the Macaws and just make sure they're not going to do anything crazy. Number one, I don't want them to revoke at all because they have, I have to make them lose so much morale from units dying that I can't really afford for them to revoke anything. And number two, I don't want them to uh, smash the Ocelots, although I'm not going to worry too much about that this turn because none of them are in attack range anyway, so I kind of have the freedom to, to let them do uh, one action this turn. So I'm going to play Emergency Care for movement, because uh, even though it is a nice healing ability, it has no influence, So and that's what I really need to do. So I'm going to gain two movement, and remember I can split it. I'm kind of worried about these birds. They move the fastest of everybody, so I'm going to go ahead and jump with... Well, actually, I'll jump with one of these ones, so I'm not too far from the action if someone else goes. And then secondly... I'm going to draw a new card with my Carrier Pigeon. Oh, we get our favorite, Friendly Guide, where I can actually uh, pick up a unit and bring them along with me. It also has two influence. So I want to save that for now. 
That's where I want to keep this choose a uh, card and discard it. So let's go ahead and just use false order. I'll gain one influence. That's what this little icon here is. And I'm going to look at the army cards for the macaws and just try to make sure that they're not going to revoke themselves. That's pretty much all I care about this turn. So here we are with the macaws. We've got um, a task over here and we've got ploys over here. And I forgot to say, I'm playing with another variant that I won't really give too much away about, but it's another thing that the game gives you as you progress through the campaign. Basically, I can make it even harder. So first of all, what it did is it took out both of the regular ploys from uh, both decks. So we're going to get the wackier, crazier things more often. And then really problematic, it added four ploys in the Ocelot deck. They're going to make them do nothing for that turn. So they're really between a rock and a hard place in kind of a weak position. So I really have to make sure the macaws don't just destroy them. So I'm going to use my one influence to look at the top macaw card. And it is a revoke. That's, that's kind of great for me because what I'm going to do immediately, instead of looking at any other cards, is I'm going to choose one of my companion units and discard a top card from its army's order deck. So that means that now this revoked is discarded. So it's not going to be in play at all. So I've already got rid of one of the two revokes that's going to really make my macaws in danger of being defeated too early. Now i got to help the ocelots shoot them all, but uh, it's a good start to get that. So I'm left with just one card, Friendly Guide. Let's see what the armies do without me having much influence on them. Okay, so the macaws do a swift, moving fast. Move for the uh, star guys. Ugh, that's the leader and one of the rangers. While the ocelots do a reckless. They're going to take double damage. Hopefully that won't actually affect them. Move. Oh gosh, this is like kind of the worst thing ever. Uh, so their star guys are going to move at normal speed after the macaws move at fast speed. Let's go look at it. Okay, so we've got star movement for both uh, sides. So the macaw is going to move one, and then remember the rangers move again if they can. So they're sitting on a bridge in range of guys. That's great if I can get them to get attacked. And then the commander is also going to move just one. So he's getting closer to crossing the river and making me lose automatically. And then in sort of terrible news, the commander of the ocelots is going to move up, and so is his fighter here. So they're in really bad danger right now. Now it's okay because uh, the commander of the ocelots can only be attacked right now by the ranger because they have to be right next to him. But if these guys can't defeat him and he gets a chance to attack, well, let's make sure that doesn't happen. And I forgot to draw my four cards at the end of uh, my activations. So I've got encouraging words. Let's me give guys guard, which means everyone will attack them instead of somebody else they can reach. Local contacts. I look at the top card from any army's order deck, whether I'm with them or not. Food poisoning, ooh. Choose an undamaged companion unit, give it two damage tokens. I would love to get on that really tough uh, bird and make him vulnerable. Then finally, Lost Missive, uh, that's another discard one. All right, so let's uh, see what I wanna do with round two. So we're already kind of in crisis mode. If uh, this guy gets a chance to attack, he will straight up destroy this guy in one turn, and I'm not anywhere near enough to put fortifications on him. The commander would also shoot that guy, but that wouldn't really do much of anything. Uh, they wouldn't attack the commander yet, but in general, it's uh, it's not a great situation. Now on the positive side, if the ocelots get a chance to attack, they will blast this guy and uh, really give me some breathing room. So what I'm going to try to do this turn is just make sure that the macaws are not attacking, they're not striking. I don't mind if they get revoked now because I'm going to afford one of those, and I already got rid of one, which was, again, amazing luck. So I'm going to look at them first with this guard card. I don't really need to be guarding anybody yet. I'm going to influence one card with that, and let's see what the macaws are planning for their task. Okay, so they're going to move all of their gear guys, which are these... Uh, Again, really fast macaws. They're going to be right up here, even vulnerable on the water, which is kind of great. I like this a lot. I, I, I want them to be, like, right up on the ocelot. So if the ocelots get any kind of strike, they should just destroy these guys. So I'm not going to change that order. I'm going to leave it on top. But let's see what else I can do. So every one of our ocelots does three damage, and uh, everyone except the rangers has five life, but the rangers only have four which means this ranger on the river, one hit and he'll be dead because he's taking plus one damage because of the uh, the shatter token on the river. But the guy on the bridge won't die. The uh, guy over here won't die. Um, so, but actually this archer would target him. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to poison the guy that's sitting with me. 
and that should help him get finished off if he uh, does happen to get struck by some of the ocelots waiting for him. So that puts two damage on him, and we've got two life left, totally ready to be defeated by a card. And I'm going to stop there keeping my other three cards because I don't really know if I want to influence the ocelots yet. Like, yes, it'd be awesome to go over there and help them attack, but that would use up all my resources and leave me with nothing to do for the macaws. So I'm going to stop there and draw my four new cards. Okay, I got another false order to uh, potentially move a bottom card to the top. Another local contacts. Oh, another friendly guide. I think there's only two of those in the deck, so it's awesome that I got both of them already. And mix groups. I can change... Uh, the insignia on the card to a circle. Now the ocelots have no circles, so that's not going to help there. But I could... Actually, hmm, if I'd used it this turn, I would have had all the uh, the circular spearmen move up and be in attack range. Alright, so I've got seven cards. I should be able to do something pretty big next turn. Maybe get some of the ocelots to attack these guys, if they don't already. Let's hope they do. Alright, so the macaws are doing a twin. Oh my gosh. So that means they're going to <laughs> repeat the order again. And these are guys who already double move. So basically, this isn't great. It means the uh, the birds w might not be on the water. But they're going to just keep on moving uh, twice. So they're going to move up to four times. Although they will stop once they can't get any closer to an enemy. So I think it might actually be kind of a waste if they're doing the twin. Okay, surprise. That means uh, whether slow, normal, or fast will depend. Which actually might not be great because slow means that the macaws won't move potentially until after the ocelots have done whatever they're going to do. Which is fortifying. Okay, so they're not attacking. They're going to build up their defense. But that I don't mind because the guys who are doing this are the ones on the towers that I need to keep alive. So not too big of a deal. And the surprise in this case is kind of a moot point. But we'll roll for it. And they are fast. So they're going to fortify before the macaws end up moving. Okay, so our cog rangers are going to move. And then with their mobile, move again. And then they would twin and move again. But in this case, they can't because it won't put them any closer. And some units have the ability to share a space with an enemy. But these ones don't. Oh, and sorry. By the way, we get little fortifications for both our guys. So now they can take a lot of damage. And then this other one will also move right into the bridge where I wanted him with his two damage, and I'll go along with him, because now I'm right on the front line. With just a single move, I can influence either side. A great place to be with my big hand. So we're going to try to make sure that the uh, macaws don't attack this turn, and that the ocelots do, if we can make that happen, and just destroy a bunch of these guys while they're vulnerable. Maybe take out their entire flying force. It'd be awesome. So to that end, I'm going to use a false order for an influence right here. I'm going to see what task the macaws are doing. Oh, another star move. I do not like that because it's going to get the commander right next to the bridge. So actually, here's what I'm going to do. I don't want to dig and still leave this near the top. So I got two choices. I can either discard it, but then I won't know what's on top anymore. Or I can change it to be a circle which will bring all of these guys right up into the mix which isn't necessarily the best thing but it does make them vulnerable as well and I need to destroy basically all these macaws so that's what we're going to do because then I still know what the uh, macaws are doing for this turn so I'm going to play mixed group and I'm going to turn the order for this turn into a circle order instead of a star order so the guys I want to move will be the ones moving but what's the use of them moving if I can't actually damage them with it? So I'm going to gain uh, two movement from local contacts. I'm going to move to my ocelot friends here. And I'm going to use loss missive to look at the top task of them and see if maybe they're striking. Ooh, it is a strike. Now, huh. The question is, do I want to use another card to look at the ploy? Because... Don't forget, the special variant I'm playing with adds four nothing cards in for the Ocelots. And they've already got two revokes, which are also nothing cards. So I've got six cards in that ploy deck that would totally invalidate that great strike. That would do just what I want and take out some of these guys. I think, I think it's worth it. I'm going to use a friendly guide to look at uh, two cards. Look at the top ploy for the Ocelots. It's reckless. They deal double damage. Well, that's fantastic. Um, I mean, I guess I'll look at what the second ploy is just to gain extra knowledge since I have the uh, the second influence. Okay, so here's what I was talking about. Disjointed. It totally cancels the task card. So this turn they're going to attack recklessly. I love it. 
Uh, the disjointed will be waiting for next turn, and I'll just have to kind of figure out what I'm going to do about that. Okay, I've left myself with two cards. Let's see what else I get. Okay, so I got another encouraging words. Gives me guard. Natural materials is a nice one. I could put two fortifications anywhere on the board. I probably want to keep that one. Another healing one with no influence. And mixed group, this time changing it to a star, which for the ocelots would be an attacking thing, and for the macaws would be the commander. So we'll see if I ever use that one. I'm not sure. I might just use it for the influence. Going over to our orders, we know a lot of stuff. Now, don't forget that the macaws are going to be ordering the circular group this turn, whether they want to or not. But first, their ploy is swift, so they're going to quickly move all of their star guys forward. But it's not stars, it's circle because of the mixed group card I played. So that's a swift move of circle. And uh, we already know the ocelots, they're going to recklessly attack with their cog unit. So that is double damage for their attacks and if they had been attacked, but luckily only movement uh, for the macaws. So first, uh, swift, fast, we get the spearmen all moving up. And note that uh, they can share hexes with each other. Move another spearman up to join our damaged macaw ranger. And then we're gonna do a strike. And I don't think we saw too much of this in the previous playthrough, so let me kind of walk through this. So uh, both of our archers are shooting and they shoot it up to range three but they always shoot at the person that is closest to them as their first priority. So for this guy, we've got this hex is close and this hex is close. But which one do they target? They always target the one that's in their direction first. So he's actually gonna shoot this spearman kind of surprisingly. That's not necessarily what I wanted to happen, but hey, I'll take it. Normally they would do three damage but uh, because the Reckless are doing six and the Spearman only has five life, so he is immediately defeated. We'll see him over there in a second, lowering the motivation of the Macaws. And then this one's gonna shoot the guy right in front of him. He would have already done four damage because uh, he's on this little vulnerable spot because of the river, but now he's doing eight, so that guy is also gone. So that is two Macaws gone in one turn, no damage done to the Ocelots. This is looking great for me so far. Looking over here, the macaws have seven motivation, the ocelots have six, but in this case they've lost two, so they are now down to five. So I need to defeat three more guys, I want to get them down three more, so that works out perfectly. Clearly the ocelots will need to go down a bit in motivation as well for me to get the good win. It's coming in around four. I'm looking great because I defeated so many macaws, but Jesus, look at all the forces arrayed against my ocelots and also ready to shoot at the leader. And remember, if he gets defeated, the entire ocelot squad immediately resigns and I lose, even if they had a ton of motivation. So I got to make sure that these guys are not attacking this turn. Let me run on over. Uh, let's see, which card am I going to use to get in with these guys? I mean, I could actually... I could stay where I am and use guard, and that way they would all attack this guy instead of... Yeah, I kind of I kind of like that, actually. So, because the Ocelots do need to lo lose some uh, people eventually. So just in case they get attacked, I'll go ahead and use guard. So this guy is going to be the target of all attacks when he's in range, which, wow, he will be for everybody because even the leader can shoot him from back there. And then I think I'm going to use natural materials to add two fortifications to the leader because I need to keep him alive pretty much no matter what. I wouldn't mind him taking a little bit of damage to uh, maybe get his side's motivation down one, but I don't want him to die. You know, I might stop there because, again, I should be fairly safe. I know the ocelots aren't doing anything this turn because uh, <laughs> they already have that little disjointed card, but the macaws, even if they do attack, I should be fairly safe. So let's stop there, get four more cards. I've got uh, stealth until I leave the space so I can keep one guy alive. That's a nice one. Healing. Oh, never mind. I guess there's three friendly guys, but I got them all and distraction. I can reduce somebody's range to one. Not going to help out too much when everybody's all up in each other's business like this, but it might help a little bit. Okay, I have no idea what the McCalls are doing this turn, but hopefully it won't hurt me too much regardless. So, closing. Just before this task, move each unit in this group forward one space. It might not matter at all because they're all already so close to me. Oh, and it's a move of circle. So yeah, that's going to be basically a nothing order because they're already all so close to me. And then we already know the Ocelots are canceling their task, which in this case, oh, was a change of plans. 
Okay, our new draw is a star move. Hey, I love that. Let's get rid of that one because, well, they can't really move anyway, but I'd rather them be striking a lot, so I'm happy with that. A final note, the disjointed is taken out completely, so if we go through the entire ploy deck, it won't come back. There's four of them, though, so we're going to see more of them soon, but at least for now, that one is gone. Okay, so my encouraging words goes away, and now I'm ready to influence things again. So first, let's try to get the ocelots to attack. So let's see. So let's use a local contact to start things and see what the ocelot's task is this turn. Hmm, fortify. That's fine, but I'd really rather them strike. So let's look at a bit more. Let's do another mix of groups and see if I can get anything for a second card. Wow, two fortifies in a row. Hmm. So I could go again, but unfortunately I don't have the card that discards something. Um, I guess I'll just let those ride and... I mean, it's going to make the guys in the towers really well defended. I'm just worried about the leader. Actually, you know, I've got an interesting idea. I could use my friendly guide to move the leader onto the tower, and I will leave those uh, fortifications behind, which isn't ideal. But hey, you got to crack some eggs, right? But that would put the leader on a really well defended space. And the only problem is he might move forward, but he only has one movement card in his entire deck, and I just got it. So it should be a while before there's even a danger of that. See, I kind of like that better than him being in a in like Death Central over here. So I'm going to use a Friendly Guide so I can move uh, one companion unit, one space with me while I travel. So I need to get at least two actual movement. Let's do a uh, Distraction because I like the idea of being able to maybe give that space stealth so that they'll have to attack these other guys. So that gives me three movement. I'll go one, two, bringing him with me. And oops, sorry, <laughs> not bringing the fortification, sadly. And then I have one movement left. I'm going to go back toward the macaws because uh, I already know the ocelots are going to fortify these towers for a long time, so I don't really need to see what they're doing. Got four cards left, but um, I'm okay with the macaws attacking this guy, which is who they would attack right now, so I'll stop there and see what new cards I get. Because we've got a cog mix group. Kyrie Pigeon for an extra card, local contacts to look at something, and another stealth card. So a nice little mix and they all have influence, that'll help me out. Let's see what the sides do. Oh gosh. We've got twin. Don't be a strike, don't be a strike. Okay, twin move of uh, cogs. That's okay. They're just going to, I mean there's only one of them left. It's uh, one ranger and they're just going to kind of bird it up over there. And oh, revoked. There's one of our revoked, so that means that this fortify is not actually going to happen. But I'm okay with that because that takes the ocelots down to five. Remember, I need to get them all the way down to one to two. And with me really focusing on destroying the macaws, it's going to be a little tougher to do that. So I'm happy that happened. You know what? I had said that movement wouldn't do anything, but I'm incorrect. This guy now actually has room to move in. And now he is fortified, which kind of cancels out his, uh, his damage here. So that's interesting. Uh, I'm not sure I'm happy about that because, man, he's really dangerous. And he's right next to my leader again. Although the... The archer will guard the leader before anything really bad happens to him. But at least I'm on uh, this army again. That's the only cog left. So if that ranger gets destroyed, then all the cog cards will get taken out. So yeah, let's see what we want to do for the next round. All right, so I want to see what the macaws are doing. So let's go ahead and use the carrier pigeon to look at their task card first. And they are going to strike with Cog. So important thing to note is that, again, people will try to attack the closest person in the space they're moving toward. But if they can't, they go in a clockwise fashion. So this guy will actually attack him instead of the guys on the tower. And I'm not sure I mind that because, yes, it'll lower the Ocelot's attack potential. But it does take out one of them and get them closer to surrendering. See, I think, I think I'm okay with that. You know, in fact, I want to make sure that happens. So I'm going to go ahead and use my mix group to look at the top of the ploy deck and make sure it's not a revoked or anything. And it is a revoked. I don't really want that. Um, hmm. So sadly, I don't have one of those discard cards yet, but I can look at the next card and at least try to change it. Okay, immediately after this task, move each unit in this group backward one space. So he would defeat that guy and then move back to a more vulnerable position, uh, get away from these uh, fortifications. So I'm totally happy about that. So we will put the revoked one down, so we'll be back on top next turn. And uh, now we have an evasive on top. I'm going to try to get rid of that revoked. Hopefully I'll get one of those uh, discard a top card cards. 
And yeah, so I'm gonna let that guy get destroyed. I know that they're fortifying. So for the moment, I'm gonna sit on the five cards I have and get four more. Got another poisoning, that's great. I'll probably poison another Macaw in a second. Okay, reduce range to one. False order, look at the bottom card. So at least I can put whatever's on the bottom instead of the revoked, that helps a little bit. Okay, I didn't get any of the things to discard the top card. So I'll try to use this bottom thing maybe to uh, stop the revoked for another turn. So army phase, we got the Ocelot evasively. That's normal speed striking. And we are, oh, sorry, the Macaws. We already know the Ocelots are fortifying, but how are they doing it? Oh, they're not doing it at all. It's another disjointed. So that's two out of four gone though. I feel okay about that. I haven't canceled strikes yet, and that's what I need to actually defeat these McCaw guys. So we're just gonna have an evasive strike from the Cogs. So this Ranger again looks for closest target. He starts here, goes clockwise. He's hitting this guy. He deals five damage, and the Warrior has no defense and only five life, so he is straight up defeated. And then the Ranger moves back to where he was with the evasive and just kind of hangs out there. And I can actually go with him. Hmm. Uh, I kind of want to stay here and have the, uh, I want to get the Ocelot shooting more, so let's, let's do that for now. Looking at our victory conditions, we've got the Ocelots down to four motivation, Macaw's still at five, we need to get rid of three more of their guys, which would be enough to get them down, but the Ocelots are trucking right along, I just don't want to let them lose uh, too much more. Okay, so I'm going to give myself three movement, that'll get me uh, to the Ocelots and then back, because don't forget I can use movement as I like. So I'm going to go over here and let's see what the heck they're doing. Okay, so I'll use a lookout to look at their task first. Covering, so that means uh, just the leader would be doing plus two defense. That's pretty much useless. And there have to be some strikes in there. Let's see if we can get one. I'm going to do another one of these and look at the next one. There we go, a cog strike. That's perfect because that'll be uh, both of the archers attacking. Now let's make sure the ploy deck is not going to ruin that chance. We'll use our last lookout and check out what it is. Hmm, unexpected. I don't like this. I'm going to roll and see which group does it, and it'd be much less effective if the leader single guy does it instead of uh, both of the archers. So let's do another card and see what else we can get. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to have to use my friendly guide because I want to keep my uh, false order card for the other guys. But let me look at two cards. The bold means they might do more damage. It's random, but they'll probably do more. I don't mind that or disjointed where it gets canceled. So let's, uh, let's leave the disjointed two down, have unexpected uh, next turn, and leave them bold striking for this turn. I've still got two movement left, so I'm gonna go join my friends over here on the closer bridge. Or actually, you know what, I'm gonna go, let's see. So he's gonna attack here, and they're also going to attack here. So they should gang up their fire on this guy, so I'm okay with that, I'm gonna let him get destroyed. And I'm going to go ahead and do False Order. And let's see what's on the bottom of the ploy deck for the Macaws, since I don't necessarily want to let them get revoked. Okay, so the bottom is an evasive. I really don't want them to get revoked. So I'm, I'm going to move that to the top. I don't know what they're doing, though. So do I, have, I have no cards left that can influence. Jeez. I didn't leave any. Well, they, I mean, they have fortification. They shouldn't die, I hope. You know, knock on wood. Let's see what happens. I've got three cards left. Let's draw four more. Okay, there we go. Discard a top card so I can get rid of that revoked. Great. Um, guarding, limiting range, and carrier pigeon. All influence. So that's good since I have no influence in my hand at the moment. So I love what the ocelots are doing this turn, but I don't know much about what the uh, macaws are doing. I know they're evasive, but what are they doing? Okay. A star strike. Oh, that's great. That's really great. That's the, uh, that's the leader. Which means not only, oh, this is so perfect. He's not going to attack anyone because he's out of range, but he's also going to move backwards away from the bridge, which is what I want because I don't want him to cross the bridge. Awesome. And then, yeah, they're bold striking with their archers. Let's see how well they roll for the bold. I would love some extra damage and to finish some guys off. So we just don't want a one, definitely. We got a 10 plus two attack. Awesome. This is great. Well, you know, I got excited, but I forgot it's actually not going to matter. So um, both of the archers, they want to shoot. Uh, this guy has to shoot here, and this guy wants to shoot one of these two. And again, it's uh, in the direction they like, and then clockwise. So this guy's actually going to attack them first. Again, starts here and goes clockwise around to there. Does not reach that bridge there. Now, when they have a choice of two people on a space, they'll go for the more damaged one. Doesn't apply here. Or they'll go for the one with lower rank. 
Now, all the sort of grunt troops have one rank, and all the uh, ranger specialists have two rank. So, in this case, uh, the grunts are going to get attacked. So, each of these guys is going to do 3 plus 2, 5 damage, but it happens all simultaneously. So, this guy, even though he only has 5 life, is going to take all 10 damage, and it's going to leave the ranger unscathed. But still, uh, feeling pretty good about that. Additionally, coming over here to our stars, they're going to try to shoot somebody at 3 range with their uh, Highlands bonus, but there's nobody, and they're going to evasively run away. You coward, stay over there. I like you there. Now, going to our actual victory check, we've got our third McCommer. We need to get two more to be eligible to win. Down to four. So we can get the Ocelots down two, and two more McCall defeated. We got it. And so I've got a fun little trick to play on my uh, friends here this turn, and that is uh, Distraction. I'm going to make everyone who's with me have only one range this round, which means these guys can't attack anybody, so that's a great little uh, thing to do there. And then I'm going to move down to uh, our remaining Ranger down here. So let's see, what do I want to use for the... Like I said, use the Carrier Pigeon. So I still have one movement left. I'm going to go ahead and poison him to set him up for that one turn uh, kill as well because he will be the next target if, uh, for example, the leader shoots here because of the whole uh, little adjacency rule. So that should take out the possibility of a really deadly attack, although if this guy attacks, that's still pretty bad. So, you know, I, I should probably check whether he's attacking. Well, I guess I don't need to because I've got a lot of healing. If I need to, I can run over and heal this guy if he does get hurt. So I'm going to stick with my four remaining cards. It's only three cards left in the deck. Let's see what they are before I shuffle. Got another poisoning. And two more natural materials. I was wondering where those are, so that'll let me put uh, fortifications pretty easily. Having shuffled the discard pile, I get another guard card, which uh, might help in a second here to focus some fire. We'll see how it goes. Now, there's one of those scary turns where I have no idea what anybody's doing. Oh, wait. That's right. I do know that there's a revoke two down, I think, here. Or no, not a, I think one of the disjointed. I'm not sure what it was. But I know that they're doing like a surprise one here where I'm not sure who's going to actually do it. But what action are they doing? Cover. So somebody's going to cover at normal speed. Oh, revoked. Did I know that was there? I didn't know that was there. I was supposed to get rid of that. Darn it. And I had the card to do it. I totally forgot. And it would have been a circle strike, which there's only one circle left. But that could have been kind of devastating. Okay, so... Um, the cover is not going to matter, so we won't even roll for which group it is because it only applies this round. But the macaws are revoked. We only have one ploy deck left, which means or one ploy card left, which means we're going to reshuffle and get both the revokes back into the mix. And I can't afford another revoked because then I won't be able to actually uh, complete my mission. And just to show you what I mean, the macaws now go down to three, and I need to defeat two more guys, which will get them down to one. Which means if I get even one revoked, then I'll go down to zero when I defeat the two required guys, and that's a loss. So I need to make 100% sure that I get no revokes for the rest of the game. I've got one free card, and then the deck's going to get shuffled, and it's anybody's guess what'll happen. All right, so the Ocelots aren't doing anything dangerous this turn. They've still got the Disjoint, and I'm okay with that. Let's, uh... Why? Hmm. Yeah, let's, let's check what their task is. So... Hmm. Well, you know what? First, I'm going to add some natural materials to... Actually, I'll do it for both these towers. I really don't want these guys to be defeated. Um, at least, not for a little while. So, that's both my natural materials to really make those places super defended. Now, I want to keep this discard card because when I find a revoked, I need to get rid of it. But, let's go ahead... Well, hmm, yeah. Let's see what the uh, task of the macaws is. Okay, it's a strike by the cogs which would be this guy here. And let's see, who would he attack? He would attack them for five, so that would get rid of three of their defenses. And then with the shield, they'd only do one damage to the archer. Hmm. So the question is, do I want to let that happen? Because I wouldn't mind the archer dying because the macaws are so high on uh, morale right now. But it also would mean that... Huh. Do I have a guard? I do have a guard card. What if I let the uh, the leader get hit to try to get him to damage so that he goes down one morale? Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. So I'm going to use emergency care to run over there. 
And I'm going to make the leader guarding this turn. Oh, wait. Oh, my companion. Oh, that doesn't work. Darn it. Just to show you, it affects all of my companion units, which means that still the archer would be targeted before the leader. So, okay. We'll... And I'll still move over there, and I'll... I'll poison the archer to kind of help him on his way. That way, um... Again, I don't want to defeat the ocelots too much, but they are kind of in the lead, I think, right now. So I do want that guy to get hurt some. Okay, so I'm left with three cards. Let's see what we get. Another food poisoning, another uh, look at the bottom card, and look at the top card of any deck, and change it to cogs. That might be useful later. Okay, so now we're getting our cog strike here, but let's see... Closing, so he's going to move one in before he attacks. Okay, and the Ocelot it was disjointed, so that's the third one. There's only one left in their deck. Another change of plans. Let's see what they're doing. So the canceled card is a cover. So they're just going to do nothing this turn instead of covering. But a cog will move in and strike. So he's coming over to these fortifications again. Don't love that. He's attacking here. Now I'll note that regardless of armor or shields or anything, you always take away the fortifications first. So his five damage does uh, two worth of fortification damage. And then two damage gets through to the archer, but one is canceled by the armor. So he now has two life left. He's taken three total. Okay, now very important to note, I'm shuffling the ploy deck for the macaws. So that revoked could be anywhere in here. There's two of them. I need to make sure they don't come up or victory is literally impossible for me. Additionally, I gotta get these ocelots attacking again. Yeah, this is, this is a tough situation. Maybe I shouldn't have poisoned that guy quite so soon. Let's make sure he doesn't get hit yet, because I want his uh, offense to help uh, even the, the odds a little bit. All right, so I'm going to move over to the macaws. I'll actually go back to the circle guy with my two movement, because he's not about to potentially be dead. Um, I'm sure while we're at it, let's food poison him, because he's another one who needs to go away before uh, I can win. And then I'm going to go ahead and look at what his ploy is, because I need to make sure he doesn't get revoked. Okay, it's a twin, so he's doubling something up. And let's, uh, let's see what the order is. So twin what, Macaws? Twin change of plans. Let's uh, shuffle and see. We have a twin cover. That's fine with me. You can cover as much as you like, buddy. We'll leave you to it. That's good, because I only have three cards left, so let's go ahead and draw some replacements. Okay, you got a false order for a bottom card. Friendly guy, maybe I'll use that to move uh, that Macaw guy off of his nice guard space there. Distraction for limited range, and look at the top card of any army's order deck. So I still have one discard. I'll have to use it for that revoked, of course. Okay, so note the Ocelots still have several ploys to go through because they had those four extras, but those are getting weeded out slowly. Okay, so as we already know, we've got a twin cover. So it's at slow speed, probably won't help at all. I don't think uh, Circle's even possibly a target for anybody. And oh, there's their last disjointed. So uh, the Ocelots are not going to strike. I would have liked that strike. Although it was Star and not uh, the stronger Cog strike. So that's a bit of a wasted turn for both sides, but uh, that's okay for now. So this kind of checking on victory, I got to get two more of these... Uh, Macaws defeated, so I guess I didn't really need to poison all of them, but let's spread it out. I'd love to get that archer defeated and then one more revoked, and that would set up the ocelots for victory. All right, so let's go use false order to look at the bottom card of the Macaws ploy deck, and I can move it to the top. Okay, evasive, move away, that's fine. I'll put that on top. It's definitely not a revoked. And I don't necessarily mind if they attack, so I'm not going to worry about that yet. But what I do want to do is get this guy in a more vulnerable position. So I'm going to use Friendly Guide, and I need two movement to do that. Well, let's just go all out and do three. I'm going to come grab him and move him up here, so he'll never go into that fortification now, because he has to keep on moving forward. And he now, uh, I mean, he's <laughs> he already had two damage, so I guess the, the water is kind of overkill, but he'll definitely be defeated if he gets attacked at all. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't think I want the archer defeated quite yet, because I still have to defeat several more guys. So, hmm. 
Yeah, let's go ahead and use emergency care and add uh, two fortifications to this tower. Just make him, if he gets attacked, he'll be near defeat, but not 100% defeated. Stop there with three cards, draw four more. Poisoning, not going to help me much because everyone's pretty much already hurt. Although I guess I could poison the Ocelot leader and try to get him to half-life. Okay, stealth. Uh, discard a card, that's good in case I get another evas I mean uh, another revoked. And a carrier pigeon. So there are no more disjointed for the Ocelots, but I think we've only seen one of their revoked. So let's see, uh, we've got an evasive move for uh, the, <laughs> so this is kind of a funny one. Uh, the circular spearman is going to move forward and then move right back. So he'll stay where he is. And then surprise, we don't know what speed they're going to do it at. Surprise strike by star. I like that a lot. Uh, so it won't matter too much because, again, the spearman is going to move forward and back. But we get two. So they're both uh, no, slow. So the spearman will move first. And then uh, the spear, or the star, which is my leader, will attack. So again, our friendly spearman does a little dance. Bloop, bloop. There he is. And then um, our star is going to attack. He's going to attack the bird who's closest. He does three damage, plus one from the river. So even if this guy wasn't already damaged, he would have been destroyed anyway. Looking great. We need to take out one more macaw, but then protect them and not let them get revoked until we can uh, weaken the ocelots a little bit. So here we go. We do have them down to two motivation now, but don't forget the uh, objective card said we need to have only two macaws left on the board. We still have three, so we got to get rid of one more. And we got to move the ocelots down twice. Now, we should have a revoked in these next three cards. So that'll get them down one step of the way. But uh, clearly we need to get somebody defeated as well. Looking at that uh, that archer and kind of regretting that I put some more armor on him now. Oh well. So going into the next turn, I'm a little worried that uh, two guys are in danger. So I think I'm going to go ahead and put two fortifications on my friend the spearman here. That protects him pretty well because even if he accidentally moves forward, he's still got fortifications there as well. I'm going to use the carry pigeon to draw something else because I'd rather have another friendly guide. It's not bad. I might even just get the spearman out of dodge. Oh, wait, what if I... Ooh! Oh, man, here we go. What if I move our little friend, the archer, that I over-defended into the river? There we go. Okay, so he's going to unwisely, <laughs> as an archer, charge out of his tower. Uh, I'm not sure what story my character told him to make him think that was a good idea, but uh, hey, because if food poisoning doesn't have any influence, let's do that. So that's two movements. Come on out here, buddy. Don't worry about your leader. He'll be fine. Gosh, this guy's already got three damage, so just blow on him and he's gone. Oh, crud, crud, crud. I need to get over here. Oh, you know what? Before I spend a lot of time moving over there, let's look at the top card of their ploy deck because I can use this without being on them and see if I need to even spend the time to get over to do a revoked. Nope, it's a twin. So we should be fine staying where we are with our three cards and waiting until next turn. Let's draw some more. Okay, we've got healing. We've got some fortifying. We've got something that changes to circle. And another carrier pigeon. Ah, the sweet mystery of the unknown. The macaws are twinning. I knew that. They're twin striking with cog. Oh, you know what? I actually defeated the last cog, so we are not going to resolve any cogs we draw. We will... Okay, move with cog? No. Strike with circle. That that should work out. He is right next to my archer, so that's actually great. Okay, and then over here, the... Oh, unexpected. We're not sure which group's going to do it. Oh, no. Move. Oh, gosh. No, 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 no. This is really bad. Okay, so I'm going to pray that it uh it moves not the leader off of the tower because then i'll abandon the tower and i'll have to find a way to get them back to the tower or i'll automatically fail the mission this is not oh gosh and they're gonna both surrender okay okay i could lose the mission <laughs> right here if i'm uh reading this all correctly okay so the uh, twin strike will happen after the move in either case so i really want to roll a cog and not a star cog and not a star okay circle let's try that again Try that again. Cog, cog, wait, is that what I wanted? Yes, that is what I wanted, okay, awesome. Wow, I really put myself in a desperate situation here. Okay, so we're getting a twin strike by circle and Cog's gonna try to move before that happens. Now you never move, won't move you closer to an enemy, so Cog's just gonna stay where he is and then circle's gonna strike him. Now he's minus one attack, but then plus one from the shattering, but he attacks twice, so 
even once would have been enough with this guy only having two life left. Hey, okay, we're looking really good. I still have to defeat one more of these guys, though. I can't forget that. Let's go look at uh, how our results look at the moment. Okay, so that's a second Ocelot down. Takes him down to three. And uh, the great thing is that there's a Revoked in here. It's going to move him down to two. But you know what I'm not sure about in the rules? A question I have is... I think it ends immediately when they go down to uh, withdrawing, which means they withdraw before I've defeated the last guy. So, gosh, I gotta do so much. I gotta make sure these guys don't revoke. I gotta make sure these guys attack them and defeat one of them. But I gotta make sure these guys don't revoke. Okay, let's, uh, I, I think we can get, we can win here if we can just get this all to, to come together in the right steps and order. It's sort of terrible that I'm in the middle of nowhere. So I'm going to give myself three movement. And okay, so just remind myself. I need to make sure they don't revoke. Besides that, they can kind of do whatever they want. And I want to make sure they strike um, without revoking. So I want to make sure neither side revokes. And I want to make sure they strike. And the challenging thing with the Ocelots is they only have two ploy cards left. So, okay. Um... I can discard a card if I find a revoke. I wish I had the look at the bottom card one. Oh, there we go. Okay. So I've got three movement. I'm going to go here first for one. I'm going to look at the bottom card because with only two cards, he he he. I know one's a revoked, I think. I hope I'm remembering correctly. If this is a revoked, I'll leave it on the bottom. If it's not, I'll move it to the top. Okay, it's a bold. So that means this should be a revoked. So, hmm. Okay, so I'm going to move the bold to the top because I do want the revoke to happen. I just want it to happen after one of these guys is dead. Um, so now i got to make sure that they actually attack, but i still got to save something. Do I have one of the ones that just looks at somebody from far away? You know, let me use carry pigeon and try to get one. Okay, I got another false order. That's fine. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's look at the task card the ocelots are going to do. I want to get a strike. Fortify ain't going to cut it. Let's keep looking. Going to use natural materials to look at the next card. Another fortify. You're killing me here, game. Um, now here, let's use false order. Look at the bottom card. Maybe that'll be better. Strike. Strike. Yes. So that would be him shooting him, which would kill him. Okay, that's perfect. So, okay. So we're going to put that on top. We should have a revoked coming next. So now what we have to do? Okay, so I already have two movements, so I can get back to these guys. And now I need to make sure that they... Oh, gosh. Huh. Okay. Okay, I can't... Huh. I didn't leave myself enough stuff. I can discard the top card, but I don't know if the top card... Okay, so I've got a, huh. I've got a pretty good chance that it's not revoked. I'm just going just gonna to have to pray here that revoked is not coming up. And, yeah, I didn't have enough influence cards left, so I'll have a bunch next time, but yeah, this, this could be the end, I don't know. Okay, so starting with the Ocelots, we've got a bold strike, and even if they roll poorly, they should still finish off that guy. That'll set up the birds just where I need them. What are they doing as an action? Change of plans. That's fine, but I still don't know if that's a revoked or not. Okay, got a strike from Circle. That's okay. No one's going to die from that. I can deal with that, but... But, no! Ah, oh, man. Darn it. Well, I'll play it out. <sighs> yeah, that's really unfortunate. <laughs> so immediately, instead of doing their activation, the macaws go down to one. You can see right away why that's a problem. Then my friend here strikes this guy. Uh, does defeat him no matter what he rolls for the bonus or negative damage. That brings him a cause down to the two people on the board I'm allowed to have. And I think, let's look, I think the Ocelot's next card was revoked, and it was, which would have gotten them down to three. But, but, losing the guy here pushes them down to surrender right before I would have gotten that revoked to help them. And the crazy thing is, I had the card to discard the top card from the deck, but, you know, I had no way of knowing that the revoked would be on top. Let's see what the second card was. A swift. So if I discarded that card, they would have swiftly next turn. Uh, oh, man, one turn away from victory. Well, okay, so um, 
cool thing is, so I lose. I need to read the uh, result from that. But then I also get to see what the result was in the campaign for the macaws being defeated. So fun little detail, we get a nice text to read for every single result. Let's see what this one is. We are victorious, yelled Chieftain Huawapao as the archers shot their last arrows at the enemies retreating in the distance. Those macaws who didn't manage to flee were taken prisoners, leaving their fates unclear and possibly hopeless. Celebrating had already begun within the Ocelot ranks. Some called it a miracle. Others said it was the world's chaotic powers at work. Oh yeah, it was definitely the world's chaotic powers at work. But Huapao knew the truth. They had merely delayed the inevitable. The macaws had not fully committed to the invasion just yet. When they choose to do so, they will take the crossing. No two ways about it. What we witnessed here today was indeed a miracle, and it won't happen again, the chieftain mumbled to himself. He had seen this strategy before. After a sizable but not overwhelming attack, they follow up with something even bigger. Since their defenses were so light to begin with, it took the Ocelots only a couple of hours to dismantle the rest of them. In hopes of reaching their next line of defense before the macaws, Huapao left his forces inland to keep an eye on things. The adventurers followed them closely for a while and later made camp to wait for instructions. Okay, so the Ocelot army thwarted the macaws' invasion. You failed to fill your task. Learn from your experience and try your best next time. So here you go. If Commander Sochiyamak wasn't already defeated during this or any previous scenario, write his name on the campaign's log, designated space for defeated leaders. Ah, so we let that guy die. Sorry, buddy. Okay, and then we get to look at outcome number two, and we get the penalty. Okay, so it says, and this applies to scenario three, if I was playing it, do not draw any order cards for the Red Army during the first round's army phase. So again, still a fairly minor effect, but it's a fun little thing that they can add to the game. So there you have it, defeat snatched from the jaws of victory at the very last moment. But again, uh, hopefully this shows what I was trying to show without spoiling too much, that the game adds options down the line that let you even return to previous scenarios. Because this one, for the first time, few times I played it, it was really kind of like a tutorial and I could defeat it easily. But here it became a really challenging game of cat and mouse to try to fulfill these really challenging conditions. And especially with the ocelots being so useless a lot of the time. So it's just kind of a, uh, a cool thing to the game that it is so adaptable and has uh, a lot of replayability even in what is kind of a 12 mission campaign set where you play them and you're done. You can actually replay them for a lot of fun. So uh, good gaming everyone and we'll see you at the next stop.